Woo, we're about to have some fun tonight. How's everybody doing tonight? Woo, Saturday night. Let's do a public watch along of Justice League, the non-Snyder cut. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what's going on, y'all? We're the Cine Fanatics. My name's Robert Adams. My name is Disinterested. I'm sorry, Chris <laughs> Adams. Yeah, so... Uh, Hold on. You did this ahead. background, and like half these members of Justice League in this background aren't even in this movie. Are you complaining already? We're not even a minute into the stream, and you're already complaining about something Justice League related. Look, this was <laughs> my idea, and I already hate myself. <laughs> um, <laughs> so... Therefore, we have started the stream already with the two thumbs down. Thank you, guys, for the two thumbs down already off the bat. It's, just, it's not a DC video unless it starts off with two thumbs down. Here's the thing. I, like, I, I, I'm actually wondering, like, are they thumbing it down because our previous, like, talking about DC, like, uh, specifically the Aquaman, that Aquaman trailer, uh, like, I guess we were super negative on that, or I was, or something. Are they thumbing it down just because they don't like us? People don't like us talking about DC? Or are okay. they thumbing it down because we're not talking about Marvel? Like, I, I, I don't understand. Uh, unfortunately, there's no words you can put behind the thumbs down unless you put in the comments, I'm one of the guys who thumbed you down. I thumbed you down specifically for this reason. We any, of those, any of those above reasons, I don't care. <laughs> I just, I just, I can't tell you how much I don't care. Uh, I'll, I'll put, uh, here's the thing. I'll put this out there. Uh, this is live. So we're on the internet now. The whole world could see us if they wanted. Please come see us. <laughs> Hello? You can yeah. see me? <laughs> the whole world could see us. So I have no problem telling you that if you're thumbing this video down, I guarantee you I'm more of a DC Comics fan than you are. Easily. No questions asked. I started off when I was a kid playing with the superpowers figures. I love DC. Now, there's a difference here of separating DC, like the comics, the characters, the mytholo mythology of it all, from the DC Comics movies. <laughs> specifically the DCEU. There's a huge difference between these. I can love the characters all I want and just not be a big fan of the movies. It's possible. Uh, I love Marvel as well. Did not like 2003's Hulk. Is anyone thumbing a video down because I don't like Eric Bana's Hulk? <laughs> I, I don't know. It, here's the thing, and I comp I completely get what Movie Finobi saying here. I'd rather you focus on positive. That's the thing, and I don't want this stream tonight to be. <laughs> <laughs> We're not we completely be. dogging on DCEU. They've done some great things so far. They've done some phenomenal things, and I, I the ones that we see in this movie, I want to highlight as well. So yeah. I'm going to be positive. There's going to be some silly, like questionable things where. Uh, or like, why did the studio go with that? Like, here's where this failed. That's what I'm hoping to, to well, maybe put on a pedestal with this tonight. I'll su I'll I'll summarize one of the this up very easily. First thing is we're going to be doing some comparing and contrasting between this and the Snyder Cut. We both just finished the Snyder Cut not too long ago, so we have since we have seen that there is going to be that element of. Uh, talking about it in comparison, so uh, yeah. this, that's going to get a little a little bit of spoiler territory for the Snyder Cut itself. But uh, the other side of that is, if you've seen Mystery Science Theater three thousand, that's <laughs> more of the air that we're trying to go for here. This isn't a hey, let's crap all over the DCEU. No, because after the Snyder Cut, I feel like they're on a good track if they wanted to uh, jump back into it and utilize that as the jumping point. Okay. Um, otherwise, otherwise, this movie is not the best. You are going to see that happen while we're watching it. We're going to convey that we don't think this movie specifically is the best. Mm -hmm. There's no, way, no real way around that. <laughs> so it's not like a going out of our way to hate anything. It's 
We're gonna we're gonna have some fun. We're just gonna have fun. Um, so the only other thing I really want to state as far as uh like my love of DC is DC. I feel like again, I grew th those were like the first toys that I had the the superpowers action figures. Um, now I'm an adult and I still play with toys. <laughs> uh, I, I, like most other YouTubers who enjoy movies and stuff, I do have the toys, the figures that typically sit in the background. I don't have them right now because they're all on the shelf at, <laughs> on our set, <laughs> but. Uh, I typically have like the really good Marvel ones. Like up here, I have the Loki hot toy uh, that you'll probably see when we do the uh, Loki breakdown show. Um, that one I'll probably stick like over here or something, put it like more predominantly on display. I don't have like any of the really good DC ones because I just haven't found a good DC figure that's uh, within my price range um, that is good for like outright displaying what are you pointing at oh yeah the stream labs yeah. <laughs> i was like why are you pointing at batman and the flash like okay batman's rich he could buy me a figure cool <laughs> he's also fake and well not fake he's fiction how are you doing tonight chris uh i'm gonna throw a lasso around you and rein your add in real quick um I'm doing great. So, yeah, usually uh, we'll kind of cover all this stuff. We're going to get started here in a little bit. We just want to make sure we got everybody who wants to jump in, jumping in here at the beginning. But usually uh, we do watch alongs on our Patreon. Mm -hmm. It's at the dude tier. We'll do Patreon watch alongs. Um, this, this movie is not a Patreon watch along because <laughs> like, you're all able to show up and hang out with us and be here. Uh, you don't have to necessarily be giving us money to see this, and we weren't going to charge you for this one. <laughs> Let's be honest. Um, but there are a bunch of fun movies and stuff that we do watch, that we do check out and do watch-alongs for over on Patreon. So if you enjoy what we're doing here tonight, the commentary and the, the laughing along and having fun, then by all means feel free to jump on that dude tier over on our Patreon and jump into one of those watch-alongs. We got one coming up at the end of this month for Kong Skull Island that's in preparation for Godzilla versus King Kong. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be a good one to jump in on too because you also have an opportunity to win Kong Skull Island on Blu-ray. So that's going to be that's going to be something you want to be a part of. Sign up for that dude tier, show up at the watch-along, you're entered. Mm -hmm. Um on top of that, though, there's other fun stuff that we're doing on the Patreon, too. All sorts of things that you want to check out. So there is that. We are taking donations. Anything you want us to, like, highlight or talk about on on the video specifically, you can do that over at streamlabs.com slash cinefanatics. If you so. want to troll troll us for our opinions of DCEU movies and you yeah. want to make sure that we see it, that's the best way over there. The streamlabs.com slash cinefanatics. We will see your trolling. We will respond to your trolling. We will give you the response that you are trolling us for. You want to get a rise out of us? That's how you do it. Streamlabs.com slash cinefanatics. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? Roll safe? <laughs> yeah. But uh, either way, though. For those of y'all who don't know, for those of you who are wondering, this is actually still up on HBO Max. They didn't yeah. completely just replace Justice League. It's There's two versions of Justice League now on HBO Max. So which you was can't... all kinds of funny when trying to figure out which one we're watching tonight. And like, Are you sure? Yeah, I really was actually half expecting HBO Max to ask me a question. <laughs> like, Did you click on the right one? <laughs> Everyone's one watching on? this one. You want to watch this over here? Really? That's what you're wanting to do? <laughs> yeah. So it is still available on HBO Max if you don't have access to it anyway else and you have an HBO Max subscription, it is there. I, I feel like I shouldn't have to explain that since Zack Snyder's Justice League just released. So, yeah. But, you know, for funsies. Yeah. Uh, we're probably going to get this started. Uh, we started this a little bit late. Let's go ahead and give it like about five minutes or so. Um, yeah. 
we'll give it about five more minutes for people to jump in and get all set up and ready. Uh, so whether you have the, if you're streaming it on HBO Max, uh, I will let you know ahead of time. For HBO Max, for at least for both of us on our end, it does look like it's starting off with like a 16 second uh like preview or ad or something it does give you the option to skip so if you're watching this right now with us on hbo max make sure check to see if it's doing that because when we hit start that 16 seconds might throw you off a bit so yep um and again uh we both of us have seen the snyder cut we will do some comparisons between the snyder cut and this one just to get a a, a a good grasp on like what what worked what didn't work there's I, I'll, I'll be honest we we haven't done our official review of the snyder cut yet that will be on tuesday night for the tagline so tuesday night 9 30 p.m central time 7 30 uh east or 7 30 pacific 10 30 eastern we'll be doing our official cine fanatics review of the snyder cut version uh <laughs> you will probably be able to kind of discern a little bit about what our opinions are of that movie with this watch along tonight. Uh, Cause there's definitely some things that I thought worked phenomenally in the Snyder cut. There's definitely some things I was like, ah, okay, I get it, but why? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, well, spoilers. We liked it. And on Tuesday night, when you come to the tagline, we'll explain why we liked it. So, <laughs> Okay, yeah, that, I feel like that's safe. <laughs> Spoiler alert: We're going to tell you we like this movie. I will take it. I, I will note real quick. Uh, some of y'all watching might be able to see my webcam is deciding to do funky things tonight, so I'm going to be going between the Joss Whedon cut of Justice League to the <laughs> to the Snyder cut. I'm going to be going back and forth. Yeah, with my white balance here. I don't yeah. know which one is which. You guys can figure that out. But apparently my webcam has decided to just. That is so that's hilarious because one of the first things, uh, especially if you have just recently watched um, the Snyder Cut, uh, you, what you'll notice is there's a huge difference in uh, the color contrast of it. The theatrical yeah. is a lot. Uh, theatrical is warmer in its color palette. The Snyder it's cut more is, saturated. Is, yeah, it's more saturated. It's warmer. A lot more of your reds, yellows, oranges. Uh, the Snyder cut's a lot cooler. Uh, a lot more blues, grays, uh, pale greens. Less saturation on it. That's going to be your big uh, difference uh, right off the bat. So, um. Yeah. Also, the the fact that the Snyder Cut is in a four three aspect ratio, which that only was a uh, it, it only I don't want to say the choice of words here aren't, aren't working. It didn't disturb me. It didn't uh, make me uncomfortable. It 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 only I only noticed it for just the very beginning. Once I got into the movie, mm -hmm. I can. I completely forgot about it. I see. I don't think it distracted me at all. Um, like, oh, distracted. We, that's the word. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, really? <laughs> that's good enough. <laughs> okay. I don't think it distracted me. Like, especially like right now, um, before I go to bed, I'm typically using this laptop to watch things while laying in that bed. So y'all, cause y'all want to see where I shower too. That would be kind of interesting. Um, but <laughs> I typically will watch something before falling asleep. Uh, right now, I have decided to go through Hulu and rewatch. Yeah, okay. I need to redo that and take the tagline logo out. Anyways, ADD moment. Uh, I've decided to go back and rewatch Scrubs because it's one of my favorite TV shows, and it's about that time of year to be going through episodes of Scrubs again. Oh yeah, time he loves year. Scrubs also. Yeah, time of year. You don't watch through the Scrubs annually. I, I usually do. I usually, I, I will usually uh, watch the entire series maybe about twice a year, and it's usually like that. That's usually how I watch it. I will watch a couple episodes before I fall asleep. You ain't gonna have time for that here pretty soon. <laughs> True. <laughs> um. So that one, like right now I'm starting with season one. It's in the four three because Scrubs started before 
television, broadcast television, really had adopted the 16.9 widescreen format. So it's yeah, nice that you bring up. It didn't bother me with this. It's nice that you bring up Scrubs before we watch Justice League because I'm no I'm Superman. no Superman. Yep. Okay. <laughs> And there goes our stream. We just got shut off for even singing, thinking about singing it. <laughs> um, anyways, YouTube's guys. not that bad yet. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> what does Robert watch on his laptop while he's curled up in bed? If y'all wanted to know, there's that information. I don't mind putting that out there. Anyways. Um... You have to donate to the uh, Streamlabs to find out what I what I watch in bed. <laughs> I thought that would work. I thought we would be like raining in a bunch of Streamlabs just now. Wow, it's crazy. It's so surprising that that didn't work at all. <laughs> Anyways, um, I think we're <laughs> I think we're going to start getting into this. So uh, I'm going to have, as usual, the timer on my phone going with this so if y'all want to if you lose your place if something happens you want to know where we're at just let me know in the chat i'll hold this up so you can see the like the time code that we're in anyways i think we're about ready are you ready to go brother mm, sure <laughs> We're not doing the uh, Robert's middle name guessing game. Yeah, we're not doing that here. That was <laughs> that was the other one. <laughs> anyways, it's, it's Crayola. Crayola. Nice. Good job. Um, anyways, so let's go ahead and get this started. So what's going to happen is I'm going to say three, two, one, and play. So everyone hit play. When I say play, I will also be starting the button, the timer. I'll start the button. When I say play as well, man, I cannot get my, I'm thrown off tonight for some reason. Anyways, if everybody is ready to go in three, two, one, play. Huh, PG-13 for language and violence. <laughs> you don't know what language and violence looks like. Nice. Okay, the volume controls on HBO Max are weird. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> it, like, disappears on me. I do like the... Uh... Whatever. I like the DC graphic. I think it's pretty good for still like being able to show off like their DC characters oh. the same way Marvel does it. Oh, oh yeah. Oh good god. Here we go. We're already starting. First of all, you talk about aspect ratio. Profile. Well, okay, yeah, but this is this is a cell phone. I kind of like this, actually. The mustache thing aside. The weird baby mouth? Yeah. I like the idea behind this shot in that, like, the, the Snyder Cut o opens with reiterating in slow motion Superman dying during the fight with Doomsday. This this gave us a nice shot of like what he meant to people type of thing. I I really like that that idea of it. Yeah, because that's one thing that the uh, the DCEU kind of ooh, kind of wiggled their way through, which was at one point Superman was like hated by everybody, but then all of a sudden he was loved by everybody. Yeah, and I keep forgetting when that transition happened. I don't know if it was like Doomsday or. Or what, but all the destruction that happened in Man of Steel, like everybody hated him for. Yeah. And I guess it just happened off screen that everybody ended up loving him, but. In death, he's a part of Project Mayhem. Yeah, right. 
or in in death, he has a name. His name was Robert Paulson. <laughs> that dude from uh, Fight Club that says that. Batman doesn't talk about Fight Club. He just commits Fight Club. No. <laughs> well, yeah. Okay. What are you saying? No. <laughs> the guy shooting the gun at Batman. I, I got that. I'm, cool. I'm with you. I'm, I'm hanging with you. So in this, Batman is... I feel like that line was also used somewhere else. Oh, it was used with the uh, Amazons in this Snyder Cut. Yeah. I don't know if they say it in here. We'll see, but... <laughs> His name was Meatloaf. I have not had a good meatloaf in a while. I do want some. I'll have to make one. The Ultimately, like... Jonas. Obviously, prior to the Snyder Cut, originally watching this movie, and we said it in the in the the DCEU movie ranking that we did, I was entertained by this movie. Yeah. At the very least, like whether the story was kind of wonky or whatever, I was still entertained by it. I'm still watching my DC heroes fighting a bad guy and doing it together. Like that was still entertaining, but I mean, if it, here's the thing. This is going to happen a couple of times. I completely apologize. But if we're going to compare this to Marvel, I actually do enjoy this Justice League more than Thor The Dark World. There's actually a, probably a couple of other uh, MCU movies, if I really sat down to think about it. I probably would prefer this Justice League, too. Uh, we've got a uh, Streamlab from all of the chat. Very famous Streamlabber here on this channel. Mm -hmm. Wants to know... Uh, wants a Chris Adams web browser request. There's literally nothing here. <laughs> What's a Chris <laughs> Adams brow web browser request? I'm an old man who doesn't understand things. It, they they want to know what I've searched on the internet. Nothing. I literally just search the uh, websites that we're always on, whether it's like Streamlabs or Stream Streamyard, I should say, or Facebook or Twitter or YouTube. I know it's not very exciting, but so the Snyder Cut, the opening credits are really slow. And it goes through basically watching all the mother boxes getting awakened by Superman's scream. Yeah. Yeah, because they recapture or they reshow Superman's death at the hand of Doomsday. And it, his scream apparently ripples across the entire globe. So that's going to be one of the things I'll say that I, I technically I don't like about that. It's a beautiful shot in the Snyder Cut, but it doesn't make sense. And I, 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 it I does. know, I, I, I know, I, I know to separate some. Well, yeah, I know they explained it that the mother boxes are like, "Ooh, the Kryptonian's gone." Oh, now we'll wake up because we were afraid of him. I know they explained that, but it's one of those where you take what was known from the comics and kind of stretch it a bit to where it's just outside of have you did did you notice that newspaper what it say where did the heroes return to their planet showed superman between uh uh david bowie and prince nice <laughs> nice i kind of like this this opening Song choice aside, the song's a little a little weird. I mean, but I kind of like this opening that it started with, yeah. I love that shot. I'm glad that, that one was still in the Snyder Cut. The London Bridge. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, we're going straight into this. Okay. This okay, is so like an hour into the Snyder Cut. Yeah, I was gonna say we uh, we we just skipped about an entire hour of uh, movie here. <laughs> the bomb is Snyder. I tried. <laughs> There's also going to be a difference here, too, because what happens in this scene in the Snyder Cut's a little bit more bloody and violent. Yeah. Uh, it's also longer. The The Snyder Cut really, like, elongated this scene. We really got, like, the feeling of these guys are coming in to cause all kinds of trouble. This one, they're just going straight into the building, and The music, the the the, the score is different. completely yeah. different. Yeah, the score makes it more ominous. This one, it's a lot more light lighthearted. It feels more like a uh, like a Batman Action. cartoon or a Superman cartoon or something. And then, of course, you got Wonder Woman's theme coming in here, which they only lightly used her theme in the Snyder Cut. They used it pretty much for this scene, and that was it. Yeah. They use like a different or a newer theme for her. I love Gal Gadot as Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman. She does yeah. such a good job. I know I mentioned it in our ranking the other night. Like I did, I couldn't think of anyone who could possibly put, play Wonder Woman. The it's thing is phenomenal. The thing of it too is that she's a very like Wonder Woman as she's been portrayed before is very like fictionalized, very cartoonish. This version of Wonder Woman, she's very like a realistic take on what Wonder Woman would almost look like in the real world. Because you have to take where the island might be in the world and what kind of like nationality or ethnicity she would she would actually would be. Yeah, and it's not just a, a plain old white person. Uh yeah. Uh, if you haven't seen the music video that uh, Tina Guo uh, did to the theme of her playing it with like she's got this like stylized cello, uh, there's like fire and stuff. It's so awesome looking. Uh, I highly insane. recommend that. Uh, like maybe Ronda Rousey if she was able to act. She can't act. Like her her scene in uh, was it Fast and Furious Seven? Just uh. I would say, I, I would say that based on looks, Gina Carano fits how Wonder Woman looks a little bit more. But it, that's the yeah. same as Ronda Rousey, plus some other reasons why we're not ever going to have Gina Carano portray Wonder Woman. Uh, Gina Carano got better at acting, but <laughs> barely. Yeah, this whole scene was like whittled down so much. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Again, like I don't think I've seen this version of Justice League since I think maybe since seeing it in the theater. There might have been a time I watched it afterwards, but mm -hmm. so it, it it really is a different take for me to see this now after having seen the Snyder Cut. Oh, um, and they just completely bypassed all of Bruce's journey. Yeah. Vernon, did you see the? Uh, did you watch the Zack Snyder version at all? Uh, so I can tell you right off the bat, I understand that just for the flow of it. It is much faster pace. It does get to the point much faster. Um, so in that, I would I would agree. There are areas where the Snyder Cut feels a little more indulgent. Um, yeah. And that's just because they gave, at this point, they gave Snyder 
free reign to do everything that he wants to do, essentially. And so he made the movie he would want to make. We don't get any of the uh, the the random slow motion scenes cut to an interesting piece of music in this. Mm-hmm. The Aquaman. I do like that line though. That line was was absent in the Snyder cut. Like they almost a lot of the humor that was injected into this movie was taken out of the Snyder cut. Um, that line got taken out, unfortunately. I think that that line was needed to really start like what we're seeing here, like the the slight bonding between Bruce and Arthur here. Thank you for just telling everyone here my secret identity. That was the other thing, like in the comics or whatnot, the comics, the cartoons, Bruce was always a lot more better at just keeping it a secret. Nobody knew he was Batman. This one doesn't seem to be that bothered by everyone knowing. Uh, Just the people that we see on screen. I think that he prioritizes it. It feels like he prioritizes it. Like, okay, if you, it's a need to know, if you need to know at this time, or if it doesn't really matter that, you know, then cool. Otherwise secret. I, I do feel like I really am missing that choir of voices though, singing. <laughs> <laughs> and then the, the one girl just, on Aquaman's sweater. On Aquaman's sweater. And the other thing is, like, why I do want them to continue off the back of the Snyder Cut and not necessarily this movie is because if we continue off the back of this movie, then we lose Ben Affleck. He's gone. He's not going to return to the DCEU. He might be in Flashpoint. I don't know. If they go off the back of the Snyder Cut, then there's a storyline there still present for Bruce Wayne, for Batman. That makes more sense if you keep Ben Affleck involved. Yeah. And I I really do actually enjoy Ben Affleck as Bruce Wayne. Yeah. Uh, I did miss Alfred's uh, wind up exploding penguins line in the Snyder Cut. That was also taken out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So here's uh, the original Jimmy Olsen from uh, the Christopher Reeve as the guard right there. Uh, in the Snyder Cut, he was the cop. Ha, huh, funny. He was the cop that was sitting at the Superman memorial that uh, huh. Lo- Lois would bring coffee to. But here he's the guard in the prison. You can also see like some of these jokes are, are jokes that uh, Joss Whedon definitely put into the script after the fact. This are definitely some of these things is not obviously because we've seen Zack Snyder's vision now. They're, they're definitely not like something Zack Snyder put into the script in, in general. 
So he's at he's in both places. I have to watch. Well, I, I guess we won't see that until we Later. get the mo- the memorial shot with Superman. It's really crazy. Yeah, we're talking about like how much time this this version saves in comparison to the Snyder Cut. A lot of this, a lot of this wasn't until like deeper into the movie. Obviously, yeah. the stuff between the stuff between Bruce and and Aquaman happened pretty pretty soon because that was part of the first the first chapter. But like this conversation, not till much later. Yeah, and we had by now we had already been introduced to Steppenwolf. He had already uh, beaten the crap out of a lot of the Amazons. And Star Labs. Yeah, that's a nice that's a nice line there. Make your own future. Go back and, re- and redo the past. Essentially, yeah. I don't remember him having lines in the Snyder Cut. Uh, he did. I think he said like the pretty much the same things. Okay. That this is the big unfortunate thing is that they cut out a lot of cyborg story for that this was version. So good. The so cyborg. Good. The cyborg stuff in the Snyder Cut is leaps and bounds much much better than what they do in this movie. <laughs> Never trust Joe Morton with any kind of tech. He creates terminators or awakened mother boxes. Hmm. Yeah, it is brighter. They turned up. It's not so secretive. Well, so it, <clears throat> yeah, I haven't seen this version in a while, but did they really explain that what happened to him happened that quickly before this movie? No, no, he had he, in uh, the Snyder cut, he had already been living with this for a while. This is, this is making it seem like, again, the janitor guy just said, sorry to hear what happened to your son. This makes it sound like everything that has happened to cyborg happened within the past, like 24, 48 hours. Yeah. So there's the same shot minus uh, Superman scream sound wave. This is the one I was interested in seeing because of, I remember this being much faster than the Snyder Cut. But also, the Superman scream is gave reason for the mother boxes to be awakened. Yeah. Well, here, uh, again, that's going back to, like, I don't know why they needed to do it that way. I don't fully understand it when you've got, like, here's the mother boxes. They're just awake anyways. They're just a uh, or not. 
Yeah. It, it's just awakening because Steppenwolf is coming. That's it. Yeah. But they did so much with them guarding it before she even showed up. Before Hippolyta even showed up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Ugh. The the look of Steppenwolf, uh, like when I saw this, I didn't like it, and then when I saw the image from the Snyder Cut, I really didn't like it. Now, in comparison, I think I do like the Snyder Cut version more. He's more he- mutated. While this one, looking at this one, I can't figure out why they went with the CGI person. This the his face that he has is so close to just a real human face. They should have just put a, an actor in there with like maybe a little bit of makeup. Why did they have to CGI him in this? He's so big. I know. Yeah. He's definitely more humanoid in here. Yeah. So he's more I, animalistic I, in this, in the Snyder cut, which I like that. That gave a reason for why it's CGI and man, she got out of there quick. <laughs> yeah. The Snyder Cut gave like meaning as to why everyone was staying behind. Oh, really? And we're going to completely do away with everyone sacrificing themselves for the queen. Yeah, those women literally just got squished. Um, they get more squished in the Snyder Cut. Yeah. <laughs> There's barely any squishing happening in this. Oh, come here. The other thing I really enjoyed about the Snyder Cut that we don't get here is that uh, he doesn't go mother at the boxes. Um, Not necessarily more gore. It is more blood. And it's a a little more graphic. You actually see like a lot more of like the horses getting thrown, like just tossed away type of thing. (laughs) I did like this. (laughs) Oh, y'all brought an army? Nope. Peace out. And he just takes off like, I don't want anything to do with this. I don't need to bother with this. See ya. Huh. Steppenwolf out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Visually, the same shots were, were grander in the Snyder version. Mm-hmm. And that's, it's interesting. This is a, oh, wow. They just went straight to it. Yeah. <laughs> they just went straight to it. Um, it's interesting in that. Oh, we already had heart the, attacks. No, yeah, we already had Diana at the museum before this. Yeah, 
I want to say. Um, uh, it might be the same actually. Yeah, um, I, think it's, I think it's the same. Uh, not that much. Yeah. That's just not true. I guess Wonder Woman doesn't do very much. <laughs> Except be Wonder Woman. Yeah. Okay, that that really didn't get bleeped out very well. We heard her say at, and we heard z. <laughs> at z. They, they they bleeped out the middle s. Yeah, <laughs> they left the a and the last s. <laughs> this conversation did not take place. Uh, it didn't take place here, or in the same way. Yeah. Garth, why did you say that name? Well, it's Martha here. The different, and that's that's the other difference. That is one thing I, I don't, I like but don't like about the Snarka is that conversation definitely needed to be between Martha and Lois, not between somebody posing as Martha and yeah. Lois. And maybe I need to go back and rewatch that that scene again and really listen into the dialogue. Maybe there was something I missed. I don't get why Martian Manhunter was there having that conversation. I mean, I wasn't saying his name, but okay. Well, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Martian Manhunter is in the Snyder Cut, guys. That's pretty much public knowledge, even before it got released. I wasn't a hundred percent sure about that before watching it. Yeah, it was. God, our sister does such a good job in this movie. I was just going to say, like, she's really killing it. I, I, I'm not a big fan of the fact that, like, she had to dye her hair red for this. Uh, we don't look good as redheads, as you can tell. Our family gene line just doesn't pull off red. No, nah, but she she's the exception in our family in, in a lot of ways. <laughs> I mean, she is she is the least talented member of this family, but I'm just saying. Yeah. Oh, most definitely. Yeah. All the rest Man, of us. Are they, so they are yada yadying the uh, his whole background with the football. No, they're not yada yadying it. They're just nixing it completely. They're showing pictures, and that's it. That would be uh, Aunt May and Amazing Spider-Man. Yeah. <laughs> Spider-Man movies I try to forget. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Bruce Wayne. How are you? <laughs> so she figured that out from just an arrow.
Wow, 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 wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's cut up. They're going to revisit that again, but the problem is is that the problem is that when they were showing this in the Snyder cut, it wasn't about Steppenwolf. I don't even I don't even think he was in that scene at all. I think it was Yeah, it was all this. But it wasn't Steppenwolf. It was Dark Side. Yeah. Uh, and there's the anti-life equation on the ground. There was, was a lot different. more, yeah, green, a lot more Green Lantern here than. Yeah. And Zeus and Ares. Yeah. Wow. They changed a lot on this. That plays out largely the same, except it's not Steppenwolf, it's Dark Side. Oh, it's Cl King Leonidas. Yeah. Almost. He's borrowing that from the other Zack Snyder movie. <laughs> 300. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing how much the, that was changed. It kept kind of some of the same ideas there, but just replaced Dark Side with Steppenwolf. Human face Steppenwolf. Hmm. Was she explaining that story to him in the other version? I can't remember. No, I think she was, but yeah, by then she had already gone to that temple. She had learned for herself who Dark Side is and learned all about the story of this. So Which yeah. is just they just skipped over all that because we just she's smart. We just know that she knows all this stuff already. Yeah. Hmm. I get it. I understand where some of that stuff in the Snyder Cut doesn't necessarily have to be present, but the reason why I think I prefer it is because one. Oh, this our, one's there. Our guy right here. You don't get any of his backstory in this movie, in this version at all. You don't get really anything from Flash in this movie at all. No, not at all. Which is and, why he which is why he didn't rank high when we were ranking the DCEUs because he doesn't do anything in this in this version, yeah. They they just skip all of the stuff with Iris. The whole saving her from the from the car accident. Yeah. I will be right back. Yep. <clears throat> Gorilla sign language. <laughs> really competitive ice dancing. <laughs> I do like the this this back and forth is really good. 
Yeah, the accident scene was so weird though. So many hot dogs. That's the thing. Like when when he was saving her in that scene, and he just grabbed a random hot dog out of the air and put it in his pocket. I was like, why is he doing that? And then of course it goes back to him trying to get that job in that in that dog kennel essentially. And oh, I got a meat snack for the for the for the dogs. Yeah. I thought that was clever. There, the thing is, is that there were a lot of jokes that were written that were written by Snyder and, and the other writers and that he did put in his cut too. I mean, there was still humor involved in it. It wasn't a lifeless, <laughs> it wasn't like a lifeless, no humor thing. There's just a lot of aspects of this that are more like weed and esque jokes. And I hate saying it Marvel style humor. Yeah. <sighs> I feel like that's maybe the best way I can describe it right now. There's probably a better way of describing it, though. Hmm. Helpful in talking to Gorilla Grodd. That's a good. That's a good point. I think that might be kind of like a, a just a little nod. Here's the other thing I don't like about Bruce Wayne in this is that Bruce Wayne is essentially a billionaire. People don't know who he is. Jeff Bezos is a is a billionaire. We know who he is. Everyone knows who he is. Yeah. Or Elon Musk. Elon Musk is yeah. probably closer in this case. If you're rich if you are this rich. If you're Batman rich, people know you. Bruce Wayne is not only known to a few people in Gotham City. Bruce Wayne, who owns Wayne Enterprises, who has contracts worldwide, is known throughout the country but yet in these movies no one knows who bruce wayne is he's effectively a celebrity he should be but he's not treated as such in these oh interesting yeah while in the other one it says meet me here now type of thing I do kind of like this. Okay, that I kind of like. That that's a nice like she was aware of his presence there. What I'm wondering is again talking about like picking and choosing little bits of that we like from this version and the Snyder cut. I wonder if there's someone who's going to be able to go in like music aside because music is going to be really hard to to change in scenes. Mm -hmm. If someone else is going to take both movies and piece together their cut. Oh my gosh, we are 41 minutes into this movie and this scene didn't show up till not even halfway through the Snyder cut. Yeah. This was about an hour and a hour and a half into the Snyder cut. Yeah, <laughs> nearly. And the big thing I hate is that they cut out the whole the whole part with that that woman that he helped. Yeah, which was possibly one of the greatest parts of the entire four hours of the Snyder cut. Yeah. The, the background, I, I'm not a huge fan of cyborg, the character just, I just never was. I didn't grow up with teen Titans or anything. So just wasn't a cyborg fan, but I love him in the Snyder cut. They did such a good job on his, his background to really make you love his character. I mean, possibly, but like even, I guess maybe it's different down here in Texas, but like the, the heads of the Walton family, you recognize them for the most part. What is, what is uh, Wayne Enterprises do again? Is it like, 
Because I know like Stark made weapons. What did what did Wayne do? Just technology general, just general technologies. Yeah. Life, life helping technologies essentially. Um, I don't know. It, maybe if Garth has like is able to better clarify, I don't remember off the top of my head exactly what he does. <laughs> Interesting. Oh my gosh, that's a complete tonal difference. Yeah. That's a complete tonal difference in the Snyder Cut. Here's the thing. I would love, uh, like, now, if, especially if they could continue with this, I would love to see the Titans in a movie. I know yeah. the Titans have that TV show uh, that was on DC Universe streaming and now hbo max uh and i might dive into it it actually does look kind of interesting but huh okay so a little bit of this a little bit of that yeah column a column b i'm in the mood to help you dude This is a really quick fight. <laughs> There's none of the build up here. Oh. They skipped over all of that. <laughs> Uh, by the way, anyone who's watching, if you're just now joining us, you want to see where we're at in this movie to quickly catch up. I'll hold this up for a couple of minutes if if y'all want to watch. If you weren't here at the beginning, <laughs> please understand and remember that we are not watching the Snyder Cut version. We are watching the original theatrical version. Your phone, you got the glare of the computer screen on it. There you go. If uh, if we were watching the Snyder Cut version, we wouldn't even be a fourth of the way into the movie yet. <laughs> Where'd her British accent go? <laughs> Roman Reigns. <laughs> Roman Jason Momoa Reigns. That's his that's his wrestling nickname I heard. His real name is actually Roman Reigns and his wrestling nickname is Jason Momoa. Is that joke working? No. Ah, dang it. Um, I can't remember how many of these tattoos that are on him are actually his tattoos. A great many of them. Oh yeah, here's our first uh, first shot of this uh, Russian family that we absolutely do not give two flying flips about in the Snyder Cut because they're not in there. <laughs> And the phone turned off. Anyways, if y'all want to see the time again, just let me know. Yeah. These, uh, this is a example of where like the lady that Cyborg helped was written out of this movie. But these guys were not in the Snyder Cut. 
Um, I want the woman that uh, that got helped by Cyborg more than the Russian family. Yeah, and because the other aspect is, and I saw this uh, in another place, was that this this city is supposed to be absent Cher- of all life. It's supposed to be abandoned. It's supposed to be like Chernobyl. Pretty close to. It's supposed to be abandoned. There isn't supposed to be anybody living there. Okay, so he basically just explained that he's a lackey, but I think the Snyder Cut did a much better job of showing you he's a lackey. It showed you what his motivation was, why he's doing what he's doing, and what his end goal and what he's trying to accomplish. This one is just, I just want to be in a seat of power. Yeah. See, like, here the mother box is gone. I had no idea the mother box was there. Oh, that's different. Yeah. They changed the drawing. I'm trying to remember where I've seen this other guy from the one that Gordon was talking to. Here's the thing. This is why I want to see them continue with the DCEU and give the Bruce Wayne Batman more is that I I hate that shot. Let's stick a camera up Diana's butt. (laughs) That's exactly what it was. Yeah. I actually do like J.K. Simmons as Gordon here, though. Like, for me, Gary Oldman, you can't really top him. I think he was the perfect Commissioner Gordon. Yeah. But J.K. Simmons is doing a pretty good job here as well. <laughs> you- Par- Parker, give me photos of this Batman! <laughs> yeah, and, that, and that's the other aspect. Is it's kind of hard to a degree to separate him from, uh, from J. Jonah Jameson, but... I think he I think he does he looks like Commissioner Gordon. He does a pretty good job as Commissioner Gordon here. He just he, he's they just, just not have, given much. He, yeah, he's just not given much to do. This this was definitely a role that you cast a J.K. Simmons just for the name. He doesn't do anything other than this, and that's it. With the hopes that you would bring him back to give him more to do later on in like Batman movies and stuff. Yeah. I think the one thing that's kind of consistent between this and uh, the Snyder Cut is that in both of these, I'm not just a, I'm really just not a big fan of how Flash is written, and I think that also comes out in how Flash is performed yeah. by Ezra Miller too. I mean this this is good, like that's that's good. That joke there, because you, because he's Barry is supposed to be funny. He's supposed to be quippy. And the but, idea behind the, the idea behind that joke is everyone else flashed and disappeared, and the fastest person there is still standing there. It's a yeah. nice little ha ha. Get it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, more Wally West, definitely. And yeah. So the thing I don't like though is that he's. I, I, I say this with trepidation because I do like that Batman kind of encourages he, him here to learn how to be a hero. And that part was missing in the Snyder cut. Yeah. But I, I like a more confident flash. 
I want him to already be confident in his powers, his abilities, and, and everything. Because he's already been at it for a while. So, I don't know. I think they could have gotten away with it better if... Maybe if they casted someone different. I wasn't a big fan of uh, Ezra Miller as Flash. At least the idea of it. There's a couple of things he does in this that I like. Yeah. But... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just push people to run away. <laughs> well, now we're seeing like the scene line. again. <laughs> now that we're seeing the scene again, I don't actually know if I do like this as much. <laughs> I do kind of like this. I, I I do like the little bit of because again Ezra Miller is much younger than I would have liked for Flash to be. Yeah. So I would have preferred that that 2011 Green Lantern not exist and that you cast say Ryan Reynolds in the role of Flash. Granted, I'd pr- also prefer him to be Deadpool than any other comic book character, but Absolutely. leave that aside. Leaving that aside, he he fits a Flash personality a lot more than a Hal Jordan. Yeah. Why does he look like Stephen Baldwin? Steppenwolf? <laughs> yeah. He, he just had a look look like Stephen Baldwin. I was like, why? He's got the Stephen Baldwin face, but the Syrian Hines voice. We should note the other thing that's different here is uh, Steppenwolf's voice is a lot more clear and enunciated here. Yeah. Whereas which... in the Snyder Cut, he sounds like he's eating a ham sandwich. Yeah. Amazon. Hello, Amazon. Are you, uh, I'm guessing you're talking about like the ethnicity, not like Superman in the black costume and Batman's always in a black costume. Um, Ethnicity wise, I think it's possible. You've got, uh, what was it like the Arrowverse you had? uh, You had a black, uh, was it Kid Flash? I'm not completely familiar with Arrowverse. I kind of skipped it. I believe they did have a black Kid Flash in the Arrowverse continuity. Wally, Wally and... The Arrowverse, I think, was black. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Are you say? do you like the Steppenwolf armor of this movie or of the Snyder Cut? The <laughs> Baldwin brothers are from Apocalypse. <laughs> and that's the other thing uh, I noticed is that uh, is in the okay yeah, Sonic version, yeah. Yeah, kind of. I I didn't like it to begin with, but it kind of grew on me watching it for four hours. (laughs) Yeah. In uh, in the Snyder Cut, they they had uh, Ryan Choi. They completely cut him out of this. Ryan Choi was the uh, the like the assistant to. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. In in Star Labs. Mm Hmm. But his character becomes uh, Adam. In the comics, and so Snyder Snyder was putting him in the movie to kind of set him up to spin off into his own movie afterwards, but they completely just cut him out of this. Yeah. Uh, I actually like. I am. I'm a fan of uh, 
if they were to say if they were to continue Justice League in the DCEU, I'm a fan of seeing uh John Stewart, the John Stewart Green Lantern, rather than uh the Hal Jordan. <sighs> I want to see Hal Jordan eventually. Maybe I was gonna even, say, maybe even Kyle Rayner, but I was gonna say, do we yeah, this is a joke I'm glad they cut out. The whole ha ha I fell on the woman's boobs. Ha ha ha. Yeah. Um and the other joke later with the lasso on Aquaman just Yeah. Yeah. It I like Every once in a while, I like a nice light joke in that because uh, people do kind of joke and act like that. It fits within the context of people, but not when it's but it, forced. It's forced. It's way here, too yeah. forced. Um, so do we think that if they brought them into these movies that you have Jon Stewart and Hal Jordan coexisting together? At the same time, within these, I movies. think that would be more of eventually. I, I would go the route of like the uh, Justice League cartoon, like Justice League Unlimited or whatever. They introduced Green Lantern of uh, what? What? What's the Earth sector? Is it two eight one four? I believe. Uh, they introduce the Green Lantern of two eight one four is John Stewart, but yeah. later on they they brought back Hal Jordan and said that. He was a Green Lantern over on the other side of the galaxy. I like that idea. <laughs> when underneath the Hudson. Oh, you better run real fast. We might need to run before we all start mutating. <laughs> For reference, we're here in Austin, Texas, and we know how bad the Hudson is. <laughs> I actually learned how bad the Hudson was because of the uh, 90s Spider-Man cartoon. Yeah. The uh, alien symbiote episode where he gets out and he's smearing the black tar. <laughs> Wow. Uh, I So I started watching it. Uh, I think I saw like the first couple episodes. There was a part of it that I kind of liked, but it didn't really grab me. Um, I haven't revisited it since, but I heard a lot of good things about it. I heard that like if you didn't like the first episodes, you need to come back and revisit. So when I get time... <laughs> There's so many like shows I need to catch up on. Eventually, I'd like to give The Office another shot. So, okay, yeah, this was completely out of the Snyder cut. Although I do, I do like that joke. <laughs> Plays well with others. I dig it. Eh, it might be temporary. <laughs> I can't remember if I read the Aliens and Batman crossover. I loved the Batman and Predator crossovers when I was younger. Those were good. They were corny. They were short. <laughs> but I, I really loved those crossovers. Uh, I think I did actually. I read like a little bit of the Superman and Aliens crossover. And back to the Maximoff house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, young Wanda. And now I will be right back. Wah, wah. Oh, 
okay. So he kind of just explained kind of the same idea that the mother box awoken w- once Superman died. I loved that line. That was such a good line. I work for him. It was Steppenwolf all along. So here's a here's a major difference in that the Snyder cut the idea of bringing Superman back was a team decision. She this wasn't fighting movie, him in that. This movie it's an argument between Bruce and Diana. Slap them. Well, oh, that works too. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad they uh, skipped all this in the Snyder Cut. Yeah. So that's what I wondered. Like, there was definitely a shot, a, a scene shot of all of them standing at the table. Was this also shot and then it was Joss Whedon that decided to go with this? Or like I don't I don't get the break between what was previously shot and not used, and then what was all the actors were brought back and reshot the exact same locale, the same scene. Yeah. To replace like this. Or they did this to replace what was here before. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like Pet Cemetery. I like that line. That's the thing is uh, Joss did do a bunch of like extra shooting. We don't see any of that footage in the Snyder cut because Zack Snyder absolutely refused to put anything that Joss shot in his movie. This sounds familiar. <laughs> this sounds like the, uh, uh, was it Richard Lester? Yeah. Uh, Richard Donner version of Superman 2. When, Basically, uh, now the difference though is when Richard Donner went back and did his version of Superman 2, it was like decades later, so it wasn't possible to go back and reshoot some scenes to fully get his vision. They had to use some of Richard Lester's footage that he shot to kind of like piece together certain shots or angles. Life. A yellow sun. 
A black suit with a yellow sun. Oh, uh, we don't see uh, Bruce and Diana in the background with the van ready to cart off, cart, cart off the coffin. Oh. Well, that was a weird sentence to try to pass through my teeth. I don't think that they were actually like digging the grave in the Snyder Cut either. Uh, no, they, they were. were like this. This conversation was still happening. Oh, oh, you're talking about they were just standing there. The physical act of yeah, the physical act of digging was not happening in the Snyder Cut. They were actually just sitting there talking. They had like already done it essentially off screen. <laughs> they were taking a break from the. Ooh, that was a nice little jump there. Yeah, because now we're in, in the position where the trying to bring Superman back didn't happen until like the last, not hour. even third. Not even, no, not even that. Not even the third of the last third of the movie. It was like yeah. the last, like maybe maybe quarter of the movie. They were trying to bring Superman back. That was real quick. He passed through that gate fast. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like we're do, we're in doing the compare cut. They, they they built tension on yeah. that. So I'm saying that we're doing the uh, compare and contrast here, where we're talking about the aspects of the Snyder cut that they sat on for a little bit longer. They maybe they needed to maybe they didn't need to what have you but it's it's this is this is really fascinating to me to see what they did between the two yeah That's also interesting, like a, a face that Wonder Woman makes there can be apprehension or curiosity. It just depends on the lines that you have her say before this scene. I, I much rather prefer it be an entire team decision going, yes, let's do this, rather than just Bruce kind of forcing it on everybody else, because then it feels like a more unified Justice League rather than Bruce is just out here trying to take a risk and you all have to go along with it. Yeah. Didn't they have this already figured out before they got here, though, in the Snyder Cut? This part of him like doing this? Yeah, it, it happened the same way. If that's still what we want, are we sure? They just did a lot more of the... There was just a little bit more of a risk to waking up Superman because it, it woke up this mother box, which I think is still kind of playing here, but... It's it's what it meant to do that, that they, they lingered on a little bit more within the Snyder Cut because it's going to bring Steppenwolf around and essentially give him the third box. They shortened this and they, they took out the drama of it. Uh, which all that did was really just showcase the fact that Flash is able to rewind time. Yeah. Which worked in the Snyder Cut because that was the key to the end. So. Yeah, but they didn't even touch on it here at all. No. No. You also didn't get the Superman opening his eyes segment either. 
Oh, also Lois was in that in that park area at this time already. That's the other separation is that Bruce goes and pulls Lois into this scene in this version because she was the key. Yeah. So he goes and gre- goes and gets her and shows up with her. I I don't mind that so much. She okay. was already here in the Snyder Cut. I don't mind that so much because in the comics, Bruce has typically dangled Lois Lane as like bait to refocus Superman whenever he goes a little. Yeah. Cuckoo. (laughs) Nice chest hair. Sadly, I cannot grow that nope. kind of a no nope. no no one no no one cares are you sure pretty damn sure I want to go back and re-edit that scene, but I want to stick like the uh, the aliens from uh, They Live inside. Yeah. <laughs> like if Aquaman was one of the aliens from the from They Live. <laughs> I don't remember the CGI being this like hokey looking either. Victor looked a little bit better in the Snyder Cut. A little more refined. Yeah, he looks a little too cartoonish here in the in movements. <laughs> Wonder Woman, also a psychologist. Well, I mean, she's been around for how long? Oh, good point. <laughs> <laughs> She, she knows, knows the thing or two because she's seen she's... the thing or two. <laughs> Gordon, Commissioner Gordon, where'd you go? <laughs> she is Wonder Woman. <laughs> yeah, y'all didn't know when you got onto this watch along that you're going to get a farmer's commercial reference. <laughs> mm-hmm. So uh, hop on that Patreon, subscribe, at whatever it's here. Because I'm pretty sure we got to pay farmers insurance for doing the bump, 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 and now I got to do it again. Uh, I love this. This is like probably yeah. my favorite scene. All of this, both of this and the Snyder cut. Just the shot. This shot alone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The eye. The eyes looking to the side. The eye following flash. Yeah. Not Ruining even that. Just, like not. Not even that. The head turning to follow him. It was just the eyes moving back. Was it was just that Superman was able to catch him while he was going fast. Yeah. Which I feel like that kind of answers that question: is who's faster, Flash or Superman? Nice use of the uh, Superman theme there. Yeah. They didn't do that in the Snyder Cut. I was waiting for that. Yeah. The I know you. I love that. She hits back really hard. Mm Mm-hmm. He should not be able to breathe now. No. (laughs) Granted, he's wearing a lot of pads. Yeah.
Okay, so I get why they cut this out. Yeah. Or why Snyder didn't have this as part of his movie. Yeah, because if he if he's able to respond with that, then he's cognizant enough to know who Batman is, and he should know not to be fighting Batman. Yeah, it's like there was a certain point. There was a certain point of what he was doing within BVS where his memory stopped recording what was going on in BVS. He just stopped at the uh, Bruce Wayne's or Batman's trying to kill me aspect and didn't get any of the, but he helped me in the end. I also don't like the voice he's using. You won't let me live. You won't let me die. Do you bleed? Like what what accent is that that you're using there? <laughs> it's funny, but the thing is like I've actually in the comics I've seen Batman make that kind of a comment before that because of how tight and like his suit is, he's like, "Yeah, there's definitely something filling up with blood in here, but I don't care." Yeah. Oh, yeah. Y'all all cared about Superman. You didn't look at... Superman will be fine. He just needs a Red Bull and... A Lois. And a Lois. <laughs> but y'all left the stupid mother box unattended. You morons. His... Upper arm is bigger than his head. <laughs> what was that line? You smell good. I'm saying this line to move the plot along. Essentially. All right, Ultron. Well, we found Flash's weakness, and it's a devastating one. He, he likes needs, food. He needs to eat a lot. Yeah. Merman. He's trying hard not to laugh. <sighs> that that is not true to Bruce Wayne's character. The Bruce one of him like that. Bruce Wayne knows if he talks to fish or not. He knows how he talks to fish. Bruce Wayne is prepared. He knows how all of them do everything that they do. Mm -hmm. Bruce Wayne does not go. What? Do, wait, do you talk to fish? He doesn't go, can you pull out a, a, a feeler? Uh, uh, you, you know what I'm trying to say. No, he says what he means, and he means what he says. That's what I need. Someone needs to do that to me. My shoulder's not out, of, not out of place, and I kind of want that. Just pop it out and pop it back in. Mm -hmm. Reset. Factory reset my shoulder. Seriously. Seriously. 
Isn't this a comic book look that she has with like the red draped over her? The red cloth? It feels like it feels like a specific like storyline look that she had in the comics at one point. Like a new fifty two type thing or something. Yeah, this is a good conversation that they have here. But it's it's a conversation where it was uh, Wonder Woman wasn't like wanting to go out and be a hero, be that hero because of you know what she experienced with like Steve Trevor and all that and. It doesn't. It doesn't inherently work because of the events of Wonder Woman eighty four. Mm-hmm. That's where the continuity kind of skips a little bit. Because she was, she fully understood after eighty four who she was and why she, you know, why she was where she was and what she was supposed to be and all that. But I don't know. If y'all want to see a time time check real quick, anyone who's wanting to f- quickly catch up, follow on. Eh. So here, here here's the thing: like she technically, eh, she kind of flew in at least in the Snyder cut. I can't remember what she does, and I I forgot even now. What she does with the bomb, she ju- she just jumps the, and throws it. She jumps really well, high and throws it higher. Okay, but in the Snyder cut, she like jumped up, like through. She broke through the roof, way into the sky, and threw it up. Yeah. Like uh, seemingly, she flew. It, I wouldn't call it flying. I call it one. You're super strong in your legs, so you're jumping really high. And two, you're super strong in your arms, so you're throwing it even higher. She did that makes more sense than flying away with it because you just need to get rid of it quick. Well, I mean, the, the break, the break was, uh, again, I can't remember this one. Hold on. I can't remember this one, but I remember the Snyder cut it. She did jump up when she threw it. She fell back down. Like her body actually like went limp and fell. I, I can't remember if she did that in this. Yeah. I think I think the thing is is that it's it's not vital or necessary for her to for her to have to jump in any of the events that happen in this movie at all, or not jump but fly in any of the events that happen in this movie at all. So there's no reason for us to think that she should have after eighty four. That part, that part, I'm okay with continuity wise. Um, but. It just doesn't make sense as far as like the heroics of her goes, especially at the beginning of this movie when she was being a hero and she's trying to be talked into being a hero again, kind of a thing. Yeah. Oh, that's different. I think this one looks cooler. It's red in the Snyder Cut. It's blue here. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then you got all these weird, like, purple roots and everything. (laughs) Exactly. Um, (laughs) 
Huh. I'm blue, dab it. Yeah. <laughs> Unless this was actually the Snyder cut. And the, then you have fly that fast. And then you'd have a few days, not just a few hours. That was the Snyder cut as long joke, guys. That's what that was. <clears throat> no issue with the plane. Oh, man. I really like the conversation they had there. Yeah. The converse in the Snyder Cut, the conversation that Batman had with Alfred right before they took off, that was good. Faith, talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Eh. It's funny. I don't know where the lasso came from. It was funny. Not needed. Not necessary. Here's the thing. What I'm wondering is what we didn't get was maybe she threw the lasso around him before he did the whole, oh, and you're gorgeous. Maybe. I don't know. I that doubt part. it. I'm pretty sure he was being creepy to Wonder Woman. And she's like, I'm going to throw my lasso around him. The re I mean, the rest of that was funny. Maybe not that part, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nice. But also the uh, being creepy around Wonder Woman thing is uh, a Joss Whedon special. So that's why that scene wasn't in the Snyder Cut. That was shot by Whedon. I think they did a good job on the Batmobile in this. And, and then you get the Elfman Batman music in there. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Purple Agatha power. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha. 
kind of. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, at the One Division house. <laughs> The thing of it is, is that in the Snyder Cut, they give some really good stuff for Flash to do. Flash ends up much higher on our ranking of the DC heroes based on the Snyder Cut. In this movie, this Russian family is here and they only exist here to give Flash something to do. Instead of letting him do what he did in the Snyder Cut. Mm-hmm. Which makes a lot more sense for his power set and for his character. Hey, man, can I get your insurance for that? It's really crazy to rewatch this because like none of those like purple things that are coming out of the ground were present in the Snyder Cut at all. My man. <laughs> he didn't do any of those. Yahoo! He didn't do any of that in the Snyder Cut. He did do the he did do the my man though, right? He, he did the my man, yeah. I mean, the action in that whole sequence is just ludicrous, but the thing is, the Snyder Cut is a completely different ending. This Ejecto whole... Cito. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the whole ending to this is different. Yeah. Yeah. We're missing the people behind her. <laughs> but they're not bugs. They're people transformed. Not bugs. Yeah. They actually felt like they had more of a plan of attack in what they were doing. I mean, Flash didn't even... Again, Flash is supposed to like run around and charge up for, for Cyborg so he can split the boxes. Not even doing that. Yeah. There's no, there's no complexity to this end. This is just a flat, a flat out. They've got to just 
beat or kill the bad guy. That's it. Yeah. Hey. Oh, and Cyborg's going to do something with the, the mother boxes over here. That's it. Flash, I need you to go uh, need you to go save this family real quick. It is really a good insight though to seeing how how these big like visual effects numbers can be reused with different models. Like that's not the same obviously it's not the same Steppenwolf, but it's a lot of the same stuff that happens. So they just took out one model for the other. Whoa. Whoa. Wow. None of that happened. Yeah. Steppenwolf went to go swing his axe at Cyborg and Superman got in the way. Speaking of. <laughs> All right. The fight between those two is what I'm more interested in seeing. Also, like, <sighs> yeah. I got to be honest, I prefer the Snyder version, the Snyder Cut version of this whole thing. Yeah, I do. Because they're still putting up a fight with Steppenwolf. He's still putting up a fight with them. Freaking Snyder Cut, Superman just comes in and destroys the dude. Yeah, <laughs> he just sits there and lays into uh, Steppenwolf and doesn't let up. Wasn't that a composer? Yeah, so now we cut back to the fight that this part was already happening. Yeah. It didn't cut away. He didn't go off and do anything. He just went shoot. Yeah. Ugh. The Thunder Cut made it look like it should be easy peasy at this point. <laughs> and there also wasn't that big of an explosion. They just like separated like, okay, well, we're done. Moving on. <laughs> so, the Snyder Cut or this? The Snyder Cut. No. There wasn't this big of an explosion, a blowback between them separating. Oh, when they were actually separating them. Yeah.
I like all that stuff right there, all those jokes right there, but I also hate them. How's that possible? How is it possible yeah. that I like those jokes, but I hate them? It's the overall, it's the overall movie, the the direction, the feeling, the mood, the color of the movie yeah. is what makes makes or breaks those jokes. Oh, weird. Okay, so a scene That's... of Wonder Woman where they utilize her to chop off his head. She's instead doing it to cut his axe apart. No. That doesn't make sense. They they made him afraid, and so therefore all the parademons, which prey on fear, started. They did the the basically the scar and the hyenas thing with him. Yeah. Now, I like that helmet better when there was a head decapitated yeah. attached to it. A he said the thing. Forced, he, a bit forced, but I like that they they let him say booyah. He said the thing. This that's not what they were looking at before. No. All of a sudden vegetation grows. <clears throat> there was just so much more pomp and circumstance to literally everything in the Snyder Cut. Yeah. This is just like, here, we're moving on to the next scene. Deal with it. Why didn't you just buy the house from the bank? Why did you have to buy the entire bank? To, to be what fair, <laughs> to be fair, it might have been a good business decision just to buy the bank in general anyway. You just got the house along with it. Maybe. Oh, wow. They completely cut out all the character stuff there with his dad. Hall of Justice. Yeah. This is a lot more orangey in the Snyder Cut. It was all gray and dull looking. God help us all. <laughs> uh, Silas oh. died. <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy. I didn't I didn't think about uh Silas.
Hope is a great thing. Sometimes the best of things. I do like oh. that this movie has like one ending. <laughs> I guess the movie's over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Like <laughs> the Snyder cut, they defeat uh, Steppenwolf, and there's still like another like 30 to 40 minutes of movie left to go. <laughs> yeah. Clark yeah. Kent being alive again is really hard to explain. In both versions, how do you explain that Clark Kent is not dead? Uh, unclear. <laughs> yeah <laughs> there should be three more hours yeah seriously <laughs> i honestly at least another two and a half yeah i mean the movie is really only a little bit past an hour and hour and a half here oh that's right this, this silliness. it's silly but i i do like this it's yeah, I like the comic book throwback to this. I would have Clark liked to be running if it stayed Superman running instead of flying. Yeah. I was going to say the other thing is that the Snyder Cut didn't use any popular music. Yeah. They used all, they used all score, no. Except for a cover of. Uh, Hallelujah. Uh, and the cover of a song for the siren when yeah. Flash is rescuing Iris. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Superman cheated. He flew. Which was a cover, not a bad cover, but a cover of Beatles. Yeah. Uh, this is a weird cover. It is a weird cover. Um, I know we're just we're waiting for the one more final after the credit scene, but which yeah. they kept in. It, it, it's kind of interesting. I feel like my opinion on this particular movie has differed a little after watching the Snyder Cut. Yeah. It, it while the storyline pretty much remains the same, it's just it, it's not even a tone shift, it's a mood shift. The the Snyder cut is dark, it's sullen. While this movie is more light, it is I I, I understand where Joss Whedon was trying to go with this, especially if you're gonna compare it to uh, Avengers, Avengers. Which he also did it. Avengers was bright. It was bringing the team together. This is a far departure from what Zack Snyder set up for 
in Batman versus Superman. So yeah. I, I have a feeling, I think psychologically, when we all saw ju this Justice League to begin with, we were more looking for what Zack Snyder had created, and we got essentially Joss Whedon's DC version of the Avengers. Well, so prior to Snyder's departure from the project, from Justice League, mm -hmm. we were slated to get a part one and a part two. Yeah. Um, in which case, everything he did in the Snyder cut that we saw now, I want to assume most of that was built for a part one. Maybe some of it was built for a part two. But he just included it in his part one, uh, especially some of that like stuff that feels post credits. But this all that stuff that was in the epilogue, some of that look felt like it was built for a part two. But I think the thing the thing of it is is that if we had gotten Snyder's version originally in the theater, one I don't I'm, I'm saying we're not getting a four hour version of Justice League in the theater. That's not that was not what he was working towards initially. The only reason it's four hours is because WB just gave him that free reign. Okay, make the movie that you wanted to make, essentially. Yeah. Gave, we'll give you 70 extra million dollars. Make the movie you want to make. And so he went, okay, cool. I'm going all out then. I'm making a four-hour cut. Um, so what we would have gotten would probably still would have been like a two, two and a half hour long movie. But it would have been, it would have been more in line with what we did see in the Snyder Cut. And I think that that is your middle ground. That is your that is that is where you you your sweet spot that you want to sit in is a little bit longer than this, but more in line with Snyder's actual vision. Yeah. Um, before we get to the final scene, while the credits are still playing, I am going to step away for a minute. I'll be right back. Yeah. Hey, look, it's me. Y'all, I want to thank y'all for being here on this uh, watch along. It is both my duty and my honor to be able to share the screen with myself. <laughs> is this is this called good vamping when you're sitting there talking about the fact that he hasn't changed his picture off of me for some reason? <laughs> um. Anyway. There's there's a lot of aspects. There are aspects, maybe not a lot. There are some aspects to to like about this version. There are jokes in here that I do enjoy. Obviously, that they're more built from what Whedon did. There's jokes in here I don't enjoy that I'm glad aren't in Snyder's vision. I think there is a happy middle ground between the two of these that works. Um, like I said just a little bit ago, there's a there is a middle ground. It's it's probably taking like like Arthur saying the in the chat there the Snyder cut doesn't really work for him. It's a little bit too long, uh, and possibly other reasons. But I think if you take that and you shorten it down, you have you have a a feasible film that works for a bulk of the people. Either way, I do want to see them continue off of what they built in the actual Snyder Cut. I know what we know of right now is that it's not going to. Uh, Snyder said, nope, this is I'm doing this, and then it's done. WB has said, we're not really going to build anything off this. It's the theatrical cut that is what is considered canon. But I think that there is a large positive reception to the Snyder Cut right now that we might actually see we might actually see them kind of backpedal a little bit and go, well, well, I feel like if they're smart, they backpedal a little bit and go, well, um, well, we done messed up before. Let's fix that now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just in time. Yeah. Oh, well, sped that up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> this card has no patience at all. 
I'm going to call your name twice. If you don't respond, I'm coming over there and skull thumping you. <laughs> <laughs> or what was it? I'll come over there and thump your skull for it. Yeah, whatever. I'm, I'm just finding every opportunity to quote Shawshank Redemption during this is apparently what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. Hope. I want that yacht. I don't. I don't want it. I don't want it. I want to play on it like a a Friday, Saturday night. Yeah. Vacation. I don't want to own it. Yeah. Wow. I still can't stand him as Lex Luthor. The scene is cut together so quick. Well, it's also a completely different. <laughs> There's no crying in baseball. <laughs> you, you, you were sitting on that one this entire thing. <laughs> yes, I was. <laughs> Damn it. Why'd you have to call me out on it? <laughs> That's awesome. Skull thumping by Chumbawamba. That's better than tub thumping. That's the thing. That is kind of the sequel that I do want to see. I want to see the Justice League go up against the Legion of Doom. Yeah. Um, but by the way they set it up in the in the actual Snyder Cut, like if they were to go off of that version, then you mm-hmm. would think that they would immediately jump into, okay, Dark Side is actually coming to invade Earth now instead of utilizing Steppenwolf. Yeah. Um, there's not really room for a Legion of Doom in there. But nope. I don't know. I mean, ultimately, for like those of you out there who've seen both versions now, you've seen the Snyder Cut, you've seen this version. Uh, I think it. I think we're in a position right now in the discourse of these movies where we can all just be okay with making our own decision as to which one we really like better, and just everybody feel comfortable in in your own opinion. Uh, I do like the Snyder Cut more. It's longer. I do think there's a lot of the Snyder Cut that we just we don't actually need. It is self indulgent in a lot of places. But I mean, I think he's kind of got the right to that. <laughs> yeah, at this point, for sure. But if I think you rem- if you remember real quick, all exactly on that point, the Snyder Cut version it ended with the words "for Autumn" for oh, I love his it. daughter for his daughter that that passed away that he had to step away from the movie for like so yeah completely like you you call it self-indulgent but i think that's that's a proper term if you don't look at it from a negative aspect of being yeah this is completely for for his daughter and i i loved it so (laughs) yeah i'm talking about like aspects of like the the some of the slow motion sequences that Mm -hmm. that just kind of were there for some reason um, uh, the shots, it, it, it was more of the artistic beauty of setting up the scene, setting up the shot as what it was for as well. Yeah. Like. The artistic beauty of Jason Momoa drinking alcohol and taking off his shirt before jumping into water. I mean, that's definitely smart. <laughs> I mean, I'll just say it. <laughs> I will say you didn't, you didn't catch it in this version, but definitely he does. He definitely does take his uh, shirt off a lot before jumping into water. Yeah. In cut for some reason. Uh, um, <laughs> we'll uh we'll dive more into like some of the details as to what we think about the Snyder Cut. Obviously, you get like a piece of it here, but more of the details on the tagline on Tuesday. So, guys, join us for that for sure because that's going to be Tuesday night at seven thirty Pacific and ten thirty Eastern. That we're doing that at that time Tuesday, right? Yep. Yep. Uh, so. We- before we end this, uh, I did put it in the chat, but uh, if you are a member of our Patreon, patreon.com slash cinefanatics, even at the $1 tier, um, over on the Discord, we will be putting a link to come hang out as soon as this is done and over. Uh, you should be able to hop on that link and just come hang out with us for a little bit. Um, it's not live. No one's going to see it. It's just an off-the-air hangout. So, um, Anyways, yeah, patreon.com slash cinefanatics. If you're not a part of that, if you're watching this on a replay, there's some cool things that happen there. That's one of the things is we might be like, hey, let's hang out for a little bit. So, <laughs> uh, no. hell no. <laughs> That's not not only no. no, not only no, but hell to the no. 
Yeah. Hell to the no. Oh. <laughs> I'm not sitting and doing tagline for four hours. I love you guys and I love doing that show, but I'm not doing it for four hours. <laughs> not, <laughs> yeah. Not this not this week anyway. Um, maybe someday in the future when I can afford to do it for four hours. Uh, but yeah, uh, kind of overall impressions. Again, I, I think I prefer the Snyder cut over this now, especially going back and watching this after seeing the Snyder cut. Um, definitely aspects of this, uh, it, it, it is for sure a little bit more lighthearted. Uh, but overall, I think I, I much prefer and do like that Snyder got to finish his his vision now after seeing both films back back to back essentially. I like the I like the idea that this again was something that was really the Snyder cut was something that was really brought on by people on the internet. It was because yeah. of people asking for hashtag release the Snyder cut is why it got done again something else we'll probably dive more a little bit more into on the tagline but uh it between the snyder cut and the redesign of sonic the hedgehog this like internet voice your opinion it works in in extreme cases like this so good job uh, internet <laughs> it's it's not inherently something that i think needs to work all the time because i think no. a lot of times people don't necessarily know what they want but those two instances yes i i'm glad that it worked out in those two specific instances. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, that's going to do it for this watch along. Um, if again, if y'all are watching this back later, what did y'all think of it? Let us know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this watch along, uh, please share this with your friends, hit the like button that's down below us. Cause <laughs> I don't know what the like to dislike ratio. Oh, we're 11 to one as of right now. So not bad. I like that ratio. It's a good ratio right there. Um, yeah, and then of course, make sure you subscribe to us, all of y'all in the chat. Thank y'all for being here. This has been a lot of fun to kind of revisit this and be able to talk about it. Um, yeah, also remember, guys, to uh, if you're not part of the Patreon, jump on the Patreon because while you may have gotten to enjoy this watch along public, and we do do those every now and then, <laughs> he said, do do, uh, we do Patreon specific watch alongs over on patreon uh we got one coming up at the end of this month though it's for kong skull island just to reiterate you do have a chance to win the kong skull island blu-ray if you jump on the dude tier on patreon join us for the watch along and you get to hang out during the watch along and get a chance to win it that's a that's a really great deal it's a lot of fun a lot of fun doing those watch alongs and yeah it's it's going to be a good one to join us on too uh because obviously we're celebrating the release of godzilla versus king kong at that time so yeah, I want to throw that back out there again for everybody who got to watch along this with us and wants to do so again in the future. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, uh, make sure you follow us on social media. We are at Cinefanatics MLP on Twitter and Instagram. Individually, we are at Robert Adams MLP, Chris Adams MLP on Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd. So come follow us on all three of those. A uh, lot of good stuff happening. A lot of good stuff happening very soon. Um, so if you're watching this later on or like a year later, you probably already know what good stuff has happened. So <laughs> it's already been apparent. Uh, if you're watching right now, though, stay tuned to all the social medias for tomorrow. Cause we're going to have a lot of fun anyways. Um, that's it for tonight. Thank again. Thank everyone for watching. Thank y'all for being here. It's been a lot of fun. The link for the Patreon hangout is in Discord right now. So come hang out if y'all are Patreon members. Um, anyways, that's gonna do it for tonight. So as for my brother, as for myself, all of y'all have a great night. We will see y'all Tuesday or we'll see y'all tomorrow night. Check out social media. Anyways, that's it. Good night. Bye. Look, I'm look, I'm like the flash. Good job. Blur. I can't see you. <laughs>